Nissan Qashqai 1.5 DC 110N Connect the 2017 Review A UK drive in Nissan's crucial crossover shows an update has not cost it any of that which makes it sell so well. What is it? The Nissan Qashqai is the fourth best-selling car in the UK in 2017, up from fifth in 2016, and, most importantly, it's the UK's best-selling mid-sized SUV. Needless to say, it's also Nissan's best-seller. So successful is the Qashqai's recipe that even the Volkswagen Golf has sold only 36,703 to the Qashqai's 33,574 so far in 2017. So how has a major facelift, both inside and out, helped the Qashqai's case against an ever-growing number of rivals with an ever-growing list of talents to match? The midrange and connector model with the 109 bhp 1.5 dc engine we're driving here will be the best selling across the range, sitting two trim levels below the semi-premium Tenna Plus and two above the entry level Ascenta. It occupies the £23,000 to £28,000 price point, depending on engines. Nissan claims 99 grams slash km and 74.3 miles per gallon for this particular setup, so running costs are mooted to be around the lowest in the segment. What's it like? It's easy to see why the Qashqai sells so well, and there's no question that this facelifted version will continue to do so. A light exterior styling refresh has only made the Qashqai look more modern and stand out more from the crowd. Nissan claims that a lot of work has been put into making the Qashqai quieter on the move. Efforts include a thicker rear window and a more refined engine. It shows, at certain speeds, the engine is barely audible, and remains fairly quiet at motorway speeds. There is little noticeable road or wind noise at anything but motorway speeds, aided by the vortex generators, just visible underneath the front bumper, which smooth the airflow underneath the car, this is usually a prominent source of wind drawer. The DC 110, which is the entry-level diesel engine, has been tweaked to offer a smoother power delivery. Although more refined, it remains a little underpowered in overtaking situations, you'll need a gear change or two to prompt real oomph out of it. Still, Nissan's tweaks also mean that there's little to no vibration through the steering wheel from the engine, while the steering is sharp and as precise as you'd hope for in a car of the Qashqai's heft. The most notable quibble is the steering's adaptation to different driving styles, at low speed. It's a bit too light and makes the car feel less poised and controlled than it deserves, although it does make tight urban car parks easier this way. At other speeds, though, it's inoffensive in the absolute, and Nissan has tweaked the weighting to be heavier around the center for a greater sense of control. You can feel the effect of this. You'll also feel the effect of changing the car's steering mode from normal to sport. Both settings are usable enough. Although a slightly heavier steering mode does not a sports car make, nor even a sporty SUV. For the first part, a sportier SUV wouldn't return a claimed 74.3 miles per gallon as the Qashqai does, albeit about 10 miles per gallon less than this realistically, according to the readout on the car's drip computer. Under the skin, the Qashqai now has a stiffer anti-roll bar, despite being softer in its shocks and dampers. It takes a few well-placed bumps at high speed, or a particularly modeled road at lower speeds, to cause any moderate disturbance. The Qashqai's handling betrays its lofty driving position, always feeling stable and planted, but around faster corners, there's no escaping a bit of body roll. When that roll happens, try not to lean your knees to either side, the plastics around this lower, less touched part of the dashboard are clearly cheaper and, as a result, a bit bendy, especially on the lower door pocket. Elsewhere, though, they're on par with the rest of the class, being mixed between decorative materials like gloss black or silver, and functional but higher quality plastics than those on the lower areas. Other interior niggles include a phone connection system that could be a bit more intuitive and a slightly dim trip computer screen between the instrument dials. 
The lack of Android Auto and Apple CarPlay smartphone mirroring isn't ideal, either. Either. Ford Shelby Mustang GT350 R 2017 Review Ford has tried to turn the Mustang into a track machine by putting it on a diet and giving it a new engine. Has it worked? What is it? To put it politely, the Ford Mustang GT isn't the first car you'd choose to develop into a stripped out, no compromise track machine. For one thing it's a sizable old bus, it's 30 centimeters longer than the Porsche 911, a rather more obvious candidate, and some 10 centimeters wider, and for another, it weighs the better part of 1,800 kilograms. There wasn't a great deal Ford Performance could do about the Mustang's size, but to give the Shelby GT 350R a fighting chance on track, it ditched the rear seats, stereo, sat-nav and air conditioning, although the latter three items can be added back in optionally. The wheels are exotic carbon fiber items, too, saving 6 kilograms at each corner. The total weight loss over the 5.0 GT is 60 kilograms, which is useful if not exactly transformative. The entire chassis has been overhauled with operated components and a much more track-focused setup, while a comprehensive aerodynamic package promises much more downforce than the regular car. Most unusually, though, the warbling V8 engine that powers the conventional Mustang has been ditched for a higher revving 5.2-liter flat-plane crank V8. That's something of a departure for an American muscle car, flat-plane cranks and higher revving V8s have been the preserve of European sports cars until now. The new motor revs beyond 8,000 revolutions per minute, whereas the outgoing cross-plane V8 doesn't reach far beyond 6,500 revolutions per minute. The power and torque figures hint at a rev V8 rather than a lazy, torque-rich cruiser, 2, 526 bhp at 7,500 revolutions per minute and 429 pounds foot at 4,750 revolutions per minute are not typical Mustang numbers. The soundtrack isn't typical Mustang either, the rumbling score replaced by highly strung snarls and barks. <laughs>